What are some of the exits along the way? Stop printing money. Okay. Stop keeping rates inorganically low. You can make an argument that rates have been kept inorganically low since the mid, mid to early 80s. So rates should be where borrower, where borrower meets lender. When the Fed gets involved in that, it does two things. It lowers rates and it increases malinvestment or walking out the risk curve, which people wouldn't have done. But it also affects just the messaging from certain rates, like the repo market. The Fed involved in the repo market and they want to have a standing repo facility. But financial, uh, financial markets look to the repo market as an indication of the health and the, uh, of certain borrowers and lenders within that structure. Now, if the Fed comes in and stands there and just they're the central clearinghouse of repo, and by the way, I don't think anyone has to understand what repo even is to understand what I'm saying here, is that the Fed is involved in this transaction now and no longer do we receive the messages from that, from that rate. Does that make sense? Yes. Like what they've done in the, the, with the yield curve. Fire. Right, like with the yield curve. It used to be when the yield curve flattened and inverted, we could believe that there was an imminent recession. It was an excellent predictor. Now the Fed is actively, um, actively manipulating long end rates. Well, that takes away some of the predictive power. So all of a sudden, you can think things are fine when they're not, or think things are bad when they're not. So these are the exit strategies that the Fed can take Get along the, the way, way. Yeah. to prevent the cataclysmic currency collapse, I That's, believe you yeah, called it, good, the it? triple C. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe fun to say, say will not be say, fun right. to live through. No, those are, when, when those things happen, those are the worst worst kind of crises. You know what I mean? When when you see that in Crocs, Venezuela, you know the, the feral cat, and rat population went down because that's, I mean, that becomes a food yes. source when currencies yes. collapse. And again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying we're being a little cavalier. Okay, but you do not believe that we're headed to the, towards that level of I crisis? I've pointed at it, but I don't believe we're going to get there. Okay, hopefully. But I'm going to be prepared a little bit. And that preparation entails what? Well, as we said, that the, my dollar portfolio, which is the gold, platinum, silver, okay. Uh, real estate, I think, you know, I can't stress that enough. Not just paper real estate, but actual real estate. What is your position on the equity market, given that we've established that we could be on the way to this doomsday scenario, though it'll take some time, and inflation is proving to be a lot stickier than anticipated? Okay, stocks don't mind inflation. Stocks don't like stagflation. Um, they don't mind some inflation. I actually am still somewhat bullish in the stock market. Everybody, we talked today here about um, potential bubbles. I think we're in a, a stage of bubble creation, but I think we're in an early stage. I think that everything that, you, that I look at is up 30%, up 40% since pre-pandemic levels. And I'm talking about lumber, cotton, natural gas. Why shouldn't the stocks be up too? They're just another thing that's denominated in dollars. The reality of it is, is just the dollars 25% lower than it was. So the, some of the stock market gain, and I know that, that that multiples are not very attractive, but multiples have stayed not very attractive for long periods of time. So I'm still okay with the stock market. Are there any particular sectors that you're particularly bullish on with I the am. stock market? I am, and it's the, the Russell 2000 is what I'm beginning to look at more now, and I'm planning some positioning once it, I like, as a technical trader, I see the Russell's been in a rel relatively tight range for about the last few months. As it starts to move higher, I plan on buying it. Now, the fundamental reason I'm going to say is that you know, the NASDAQ outperformed aggressively since the March 23rd of 2020 lows. Um, when we bounced off those lows, the NASDAQ had rates were going to zero or thereabouts. Tech stocks love that. Gro the growth portfolio loves loves low rates because they're valued by every Wall Street analyst on this uh, discounted cash flow model. So if rates start to go higher, which they could now, the NASDAQ could be hurt. Plus also they were the work from home stocks, the digital age, the information the out being in person, uh, and they benefited from that greatly. Um, now I think that's going to reverse. And I think, so the, the argument I make for Russell is less good than the argument I make against the NASDAQ. I'm not sure the technicals are saying that the Russell is, and perhaps the fundamental story is that's going to be more of a domestic story, domestic growth story. Why would the Russell, which is predominantly made of smaller cap stocks, perform well when we could be in a stagflationary environment, when the IMF, for example, cutting the U.S. growth forecast by one full percent, and inflation is proving to be sticky while growth forecasts are not as robust. Why would that support your case that uh, the Russell 2000 could be poised to it benefit? It certainly doesn't, the way you put it, by the way. <laughs> but what does support the case is that the government still continues its spending, still continues injecting money into the system. The Fed 
perhaps begins to get out of the way, although I don't believe that the Fed will get out of the way as quickly as some people think, and I think the Fed will keep rates low. So any argument you can give that's negative for stocks in general, his, for the last, uh, not even just the last two years, perhaps the last five, six, seven years, you can make the counter argument that anything bad is coupled with more excess spending, more uh, lower rates, dovish Fed, that counterbalances the negative. So I think that- So you don't see the Fed tapering? <laughs> no, I mean, the Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Fed just lowered their GDP estimates from 6% to 0.5%. I don't know exactly which quarter they're talking about. Again, I don't care. The point is, is that things are changing quickly, as you said. So the Fed tapering in that kind of environment seems kind of silly to me. Um, should they? I, I mean, they absolutely should taper. I said before they should get out of the way. I, get, I guess the odds of the Fed tapering is what I'm going to say I have lessened. All right. Let's circle back to silver, because as you said, that is sort of your prime pick at the moment. At the moment. And you said that some of the interest in silver has been taken away and in gold has been taken away by Bitcoin, which has now reached an all time high. Mm -hmm. Does that trend continue then? That part I don't know. Um, I think so. I think that, that what's really interesting to me- The trend that is of, of Bitcoin taking away interest yeah. from, from silver, just to yes. clarify. I, I, okay, so I'm gonna say that's a yes. You know, we're in this week we're in is the week of a launch of a Bitcoin ETF. Um, all along the way, every different level of institutional adoption validates cryptocurrencies. Um, El Salvador, not an economically significant country, but a real live country, adopting that as a currency, it's an amazing thing. I thought the biggest, the biggest instance is when the CME launched their Bitcoin futures in 2017, kind of legitimized Bitcoin. I don't know if they intended to do that, actually, I, I did meet with the FT, F, uh, Future Trade Commission on that too. And they're like, no, just people want to trade Bitcoin and you know, we don't want to stop them. So they didn't really have an opinion on it. But I think in the, uh, the, allowing that contract to happen has given some legitimacy to crypto. Again, I'm in crypto. I don't try to trade it and time it. I'm keeping it as a dollar hedge in case of the cataclysmic event we're talking about. And I don't want to be without proper dollar hedges. I'm not sure that's the right one, but it belongs in the portfolio, I think. Okay. so. 12-month outlook for silver, you said, $35. Sure. What's your five and 10-year outlook for silver? I'm, I'm a trader. I don't even necessarily do five and 10-year. Um, so I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna say no to that. Is that okay? I like my different portfolios that I trade are you know two week, three month, six month a year. I will give it. I, I do think once this ball starts rolling, it could roll for a long time. So I, I think it was B of A that came out with a piece saying $50 silver. Uh, they came out with a couple of months ago talking about the Green New Deal commodities. Uh, sure, let's go with that. But again, I will, I will couch that with saying that five years out is not really my thing. Okay, but a year out is your thing. Sure. And you've got $35 silver a year out. Can't talk about silver without quickly touching on this notion of a silver price manipulation, that there are so many people that have a vested interest in suppressing the price of silver because of its use in a range of in industrial sectors, and that there is more paper silver out there than there is physical silver to cover it. Let's quickly get your thoughts on that. Well, that's one of the reasons you use technical analysis to get entry points, because that fundamental story of push-pull is fascinating, it's compelling, it's, it's valid. So you, as a trader, and even like a, if you call a year out investing, have to pick a time where you think the wave is tipping, cresting, whatever that metaphor is. And that's what I believe is happening now. I believe that fight to keep it lower is beginning to be lost okay. and that the market then will override it. All right, so the fight to suppress silver is being lost and silver is poised for its time to shine. Sounds good, yeah, it's time to shine. You had to use that one more time, right? I had to use it again.